I, I've never done anything quite on a window before. I've done, I did a piece at the ICA quite a long time ago, maybe eight years ago, which was a big wall piece. And uh, there was lots of artists involved and I just put it up. And I guess doing this one was a bit like that. I just kind of tried to plan it really carefully. So when I came here, I was just doing it rather than thinking about it. So I, I, I kind of made it all carefully in my studio as a plan and prepared it before I came. I guess in a way I did it uh, exactly how I draw a comic, actually, just much, much bigger. Because when I'm drawing my cartoons, I'll do a very careful pencil version, which I even fiddle about with on Photoshop before printing it out and tracing it for the actual page on Lightbox and then working into it more. And here I, I pretty much did the same thing, just on a giant scale. I took a small drawing and blew it up on my computer, printed it out in parts and stuck it all together, and then just traced it onto the window. So it was kind of all the work was done before I got here, and it was just trying to make sure the texture of the line came out nice. I was kind of casting around for an idea for a, for a graphic novel, and I'd done a short piece for Kramer's Ergot 7, which was a huge comic book. And I did a four-page story for that about Noah's Ark. And it was looking at Noah from the point of view of his sons and kind of in, having a new take on the Noah story. And in the end, I was happy with the way that turned out. And I, and I, and I thought that would make, that I'd look for another Bible story that might be worth looking into. And David and Goliath just really came into my mind. I guess some sometimes as a child I was told that. And I, it, it has kind of stuck with me. So I, I looked it up, the actual Bible version, and I was really immediately thought, this is, this is good, this is something to work with. Because there's big gaps. It's a very clear, simple story, but there's also big gaps in it. And I thought I, my story could take place in those big gaps. So it seemed like, as soon as I read that, I thought this, this is the thing to do. And I, I also like the idea that David's triumph is Goliath's tragedy, so it's a kind of perfect, a perfect story to turn around and look at from the Goliath's point of view. As a small child, I went to church and Sunday school in Scotland, and I think we had a good minister who told stories well, and I think, I think it was probably him who told the story of David and Goliath, so that might be why it's in my mind. I don't think... Goliath is a, an anti-religious or a, a sort of militantly atheist story. You can kind of give, you can take or leave the religion in it. You could imagine that David is powered by God to kill Goliath, or you could just see it that it's his kind of very strong faith which gives him that power. So you can kind of take it or leave it, and that's not the existence or otherwise of God in the story. It's not really of great interest. Doing Goliath was a big step forward for me. It felt like it was a it was a new thing, and I I felt I was quite comfortable with making short things. Even while I was making Goliath, I was making short things and making small things for the Guardian. And I did kind of feel the pressure of trying to make make a long thing and make it worth the reader's time of reading it and make it hold together as a story. And I really wanted it to be a tight story that. Um, didn't. Well, I suppose it does meander, but not, just that didn't feel like I'd taken a short story and puffed it up to make a book. I wanted it to feel like a graphic novel. I suppose the technique that I use has come out of more from doing that thing for The Guardian, because I've done it for seven years, once a week, so I've done 280 or something of them. So that kind of refines my technique. And I think it's quite, that cartoon's quite small. And I think that simplicity and having a very small space to work with has been really good for me. And I think Goliath is simpler because of things I learned making that uh, regular cartoon. And with that, in a way, it's a little bit like Goliath in a way, because I'll be given a theme by the Guardian, a letter. It's based on, my cartoon appears on letters, so I'll be sent a letter, which is my theme. And I try and come at, come at it from an interesting way, so it's like trying to, to do something new. And in a way, that's what I did with Goliath, trying to look at an old thing. I suppose.
suppose I, I think there's a certain amount of drawing, little drawings, because there's less. It stops you being over fiddly with them or worrying about them too much. And, um, in the sketchbook, I find that I don't feel the pressure if I'm just doing a little drawing. And also, in a way, I suppose I'm making up little things which I can then build comics and stories out of. And when I was when I was a kid, I used to always draw in the margins of my school books. And I think it's come, it kind of came out of that, just doing small drawings that appear in the corner. So it's just naturally the way they come out. Yeah, I, I drew the whole book out in pencil so I could yes. go back and edit it, and also so I could present it to draw in quarterly and check if they wanted any changes or had any ideas for it. And I guess I started using Photoshop more in order to edit that and move the panels around and swap things because I felt that gave me more freedom and I could be more... Uh, I could force myself to change things more if they needed to be changed. And then when I had a version I really liked, I printed it all out and on a light box traced off the ink version and then sat down and crossed out. And looking back on it, I, I think maybe I, I... Because it was my first book, I think I maybe was too cautious with that and planned things out too much. And with my next book, I think I'll maybe try and be a bit more relaxed about that sort of thing. The, the, the thing I always loved about self-publishing was the real control I had to make what I wanted and to design it the way I wanted, to have full control of the whole thing over the, the book as an object and over everything. But working with Ron and Guasley, they were just so keen to help me do it the way I wanted to. The process wasn't actually that different. In fact, it was more like I could do what I wanted to and I had people trying to help me do that. So that was really positive. And the nice thing now is it's the book is coming out and I'm not having to carry big piles of it around shops or send it off. You know, I've got people helping with that. And that's really nice. And also that feeling of being part of a group of the people who work at D and Q and the artists. It's nice to feel you're in a, a stable or a gang. Well, I really enjoyed Anders Nielsen's big question, and that was very impressive. You know, it's just so long, and it's quite amazing because I've known Anders for a while, and he's always been working on that. And I, it, it's just great that it, you know, after all that time working on something, it really holds together. And I really enjoyed Wilson, the latest Daniel Clowns book. That was really good really a really good story and um, really tight, which I like that. It, the work of Jason really inspired me. Uh, I think just the simplicity of his storytelling. I really like making comics which can be kind of interesting drawings and puzzles and can be in, in, in visually, visually maybe over the top. But for the graphic novel, I, I try to rein that back in, and I think that's what I like about Jason's work is he keeps it simple and he tells a story really, really nicely, and it's very attractive, but it's it's understated. And I definitely wanted Goliath to be a comic that wasn't difficult to read, that maybe someone who didn't wasn't used to reading comics would find very easy to pick up, and, and it would just kind of flow. And that's so so I, I was really I really learned that from Mr. Jason. When I came to London in 1999, a friend at college told me about Gosh. And I came, and I, I found in Gosh a comic by my friend Matt Havis, which he'd self-published. And I'd known Matt before, but kind of lost touch with him, but seeing his comic in Gosh, called Fidget, it really made me, I mean, I knew people self-published, but it really made me think, oh, here's someone I know making a comic, and here I see it on the shelf. And so that was one of the things that kind of spurred me on to, to self-publish my own stuff when I, when I was in London.